everyone. Um, thank you for those of you who are watching live on Facebook and for those of you who are in the room. My name is Angie. I'm the program manager for the Business Center Guelph Wellington. Today we are doing a live stream with it's balance, right? Balance design, yep. um, balance design. And we're uh, talking about branding and stuff. So Anybody who is watching this on Facebook, feel free to add mess any comments, questions you have right into the comments on Facebook. I'll be monitoring that as we go through. If you're watching this after the fact, don't hesitate to send us a message um, or send me an email at angelacwealthbusiness.com if you would like to connect with the ladies. Um, or if you have any qu further questions, we'll be happy to get those for you after the fact as well. So for now, I will just introduce our lovely uh, participants and hosts for today. So hi, ladies. I want, I'm going to just, I figured you have a little introduction spiel anyway. So I'll just pass it right over to you, but I'll be here if you need anything. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> nice. All right, so uh, we are Balanced Design Agency. My name is Rachel, and this is my partner, Theo. Um, so we're a creative design agency in Guelph, and we specialize in communication, uh, graphic design, branding, and web design. Um, and so our, our sort of main focus when we're working with clients is to create sort of a visual story for their brand. Um, and we do that by building compelling brand identities for our clients that with the goal of setting them apart from their competition. Um, so yeah, we started about two years ago mm -hmm. uh, and we mainly work with other small businesses in Guelph. Um, and yeah, we're gonna jump into the presentation. Today, we're gonna talk about how to build a compelling brand identity from start to finish. So. We're going to basically go through our process when we work with our clients to uh, build a brand identity for them and how for sort of new businesses starting out, how you might be able to begin sort of this process of developing your brand identity. So we really wanted to uh, develop this presentation for people who are either looking to rebrand for their business so maybe they've been in business for a number of years and over time they feel their current branding does not reflect their uh you know business model at this stage and so they're looking to rebrand visually um we also are sort of designing this presentation for people who are um wondering if their branding is still kind of up to date or relevant within today's um like visual world and then also like if you're just starting from scratch you're a brand new business uh this is also a presentation for you for how you can start to think about branding um so we're gonna go through sort of three areas throughout the presentation including um how you can brand from the inside so these are your internal branding which would be your values your target audience and your demographics and then we're going to uh, go further than that and see how you can brand your business from the outside. So that's everything from your visual identity, uh, logo, your palette, your typography. So everything you're kind of showing the public in a visual way. So um, we're going to start with internal branding, which informs the design of your external branding um, and then this we're going to share across all platforms of your customer's experience with your business. Perfect. So we're going to talk about what exactly is internal branding. So like Rachel said, internal branding focuses on bringing the company's core culture, identity, and premise to the outside world. So this includes your company's values, mission statement, content strategy, brand positioning, and target audience. So especially when you're at the beginning of your business, it's super important to define these areas first to differentiate yourself from your competitors. Um, it also informs your employees and your customers on what they can expect from your business. So the ultimate goal of an internal brand strategy is to inspire engagement and loyalty from your from your people and make sure that they understand who you are and can be empowered by your company's purpose and culture. 
So when we begin a new branding with project with some of our clients, um, we typically meet with them to learn more about their business's values, history, priorities, and everything we just covered. Um, and this helps us to inform the visual design. Um, this means there's a couple steps we need to take before we jump into designing a logo. And these steps include evaluating your organization, conducting industry research, and developing a plan for how your branding can be used to communicate with your customers. So for example, here are some of the questions we typically ask some of our clients during an internal branding phase in order to better understand their business. Um, these are really great questions that you can just ask yourself when you're developing your branding for a new business or if you're thinking about going through a rebrand. So some of these questions include, why are you getting, why are you doing your branding in the first place? Who are your customers now? Who are the customers you want to attract? Who are my competitors and what is their brand position? When customers think of my company, what feelings and association, associations do I want them to have? Is there a specific style of branding or techniques used in your industry? What personality do I want my brand to have? How is my brand different? What is your story? What qualities or core values do you, do you believe define your business or organization? And what sets you apart from similar organizations? Another fun one we like to ask some of our clients is, if your brand were a person, what adjectives would you use to describe them? And obviously, what is your unique selling proposition? So these are all really great questions to ask yourself, which can lead into the visual design. Um, and obviously, if you probably, <laughs> that was a lot of questions I just listed off. If you're ever interested in like just getting a list from us of all these questions to ask yourself, feel free to email us after this presentation, and we're happy to share any of this information with you. So internal branding, leads into external branding, which we're going to talk about <laughs> next. So before getting into um, more information on kind of providing some tips on how to get the process going for developing your brand identity, we want to talk about what external branding is in the first place. So your external branding is going to be everything that your customers see about your business um, before even interacting with you. So it can be sort of loosely defined as the sum of all of your marketing efforts and customer facing activities. So this is sort of like the, the, the first thing that people are seeing of your business, which will then directly impact how they feel about your business. Um, so these things include your logo, your brand colors, typography, your um, photographic and illustrative uh, mediums that you use. Um, and then also another important one is your brand voice. So this is um, present in anything that has to do with uh, like copywriting, your taglines, and how you're communicating with your customers. Um, so this aspect of your branding really connects your potential customers to your brand. Um, and it helps to just get them invested. Um, it influences their opinion of your brand, and it ultimately makes them invest in your products and services if they can connect visually to you. Um, so that's sort of what sets, sets you apart is if you have that strong branding developed. Um, so yeah, we would say like a brand with a clear purpose that is communicated efficiently through their external branding is more likely to receive purchases, they're more likely to have uh, customers trust them, and they're more likely to um, have customers who are championing, championing them to their family and friends. Um, so yeah, your external branding is essentially communicating your internal to your customers. So everything we talked about in the internal branding phase, so developing those core values, developing your mission statement, those are crucial in then kind of presenting them in a visual way. So you wanna make sure that those uh, aspects are definitely, um, you're, you're thinking about them, you're spending time developing them before you move into the visual side. So once you do that, you can get into the external branding, which is the exciting part. So um, we're gonna just go through a couple of the, the areas. So first, starting off with your logo. Um, 
you want to make sure there's kind of four things you want to make sure that are present when you're developing a logo for your brand. The first being readability. So you want to make sure that your logo is readable at different scales, at different sizes. Um, it's legible. So if you're using, let's say, a, a script font for your logo, that it's legible, it's um, easy to read from far away, um, and it's instantly understood by your customer. The second would be recognition. So making sure that that logo is memorable to your customers. We all know the Nike swoosh, for example, that's very recognizable. We, we can see it and instantly know who it belongs to. Um, the third would be placement. So with a logo, you're going to have that on a variety of different uh, mediums. So your website, your socials, stationery, um, signs, packaging, if you have products. So you want to make sure that it's uh, transferable to every single aspect in that customer journey. Um, and then finally, we have translation. So with the logo, you want to make sure you have a vertical version, a horizontal version, um, maybe even just a submark. So like, again, I'll use the Nike swoosh as an example. Um, that's just a symbol without any text. So that can be used in places where maybe space is an issue, but we still know exactly who that belongs to. Um, also, feel free if anyone has any questions uh, within our Zoom to just pop it into the chat. Um, okay, so then brand colors moving on. Um, this is also very important and it can really uh, provide an emotional aspect to your brand where customers can uh, sort of relate to the brand depending on what colors you're using. So this is a great way to, to, to reflect your core values. Colors have uh, meaning behind them. So depending on what colors you're using, that will automatically provide a, a feeling or emotion in the minds of your customers and is something to think about when choosing your color palette. So uh, what we would recommend if you are just beginning to develop a color palette would be to pick three colors a base color, an accent color, and a neutral. And basically your base color is the dominant color that represents your business's unique personality. So for example, let's say, um, let's say your business, you want to evoke some kind of emotions for trust, um, loyalty, um, let's say, uh, trust, loyalty, and <laughs> um, education. Yeah, a color that you might want to use for that would be blue. Um, and this is going to kind of set a light bulb off in the minds of your customers subconsciously because we just all always connect certain uh, characteristics to certain colors. So make sure that that base color is the dominant color for your personality. The accent color is going to uh, sort of pair nicely with your base color, as well as continue to reflect those core values. And your neutral color is going to um, basically be the most present in your design. So this is a color that's potentially a background color that you can use consistently um, with your primary and accent colors. So that's a, a good way to sort of just jump in and start to develop that color palette. Um, and if you're still unsure of how to pick these three colors, uh, what you can do is even just look at certain color schemes like monochromatic, analogous, complementary. These color schemes will kind of help you figure out which colors are working nicely together. Um, and that's a good sort of first step for developing your color palette. Um, next, we have typography. So in the same way that it, uh, in the same way that your brand colors are going to reflect your internal branding, so is your typography. You want to make sure that your typography is legible, is readable, um, and you also want to make sure that it aesthetically fits within your industry. So typography can, you know, evoke a lot of different tones and moods depending on the style, and you can create 
um, different effects depending on the classification of type you use. So whether it's a script font or a modern sans serif font, these will subconsciously again tell your customer what kind of business you are. Um, so you want to match it to your brand message and to the audience you believe is going to be um, interested in your products or your services. Um, and then we kind of recommend using no more than three typefaces. When it comes to branding, uh, when you first start out, sometimes it's easy to just like a lot of different things and bring everything in all at once, but it's a good idea to just keep it simple at the beginning. Don't go overboard with your colors or your typography. Um, choosing more, more of a standard font is usually always better than going with a crazy uh, decorative font. So always come back to if it's readable, um, legible, and memorable. Um, and then finally, your brand voice. So this is your distinct personality that's curated to communicate with your audience across all touch points. So it should be unified and a standard approach to tone, style, mess and messaging. Um, and then this way, if, if across all of your social media, on your website, uh, any, any point where you're communicating with your audience, if it's recognizable and it's consistent, then you're going to get that connection with your customer. And that's very important um, because this ultimately, again, reflects your internal values. So for example, your uh, brand voice might be positive. It might be inspiring or educational. Uh, it might be exclusive or elegant. So coming up with those sort of internal values where you're developing that personality from the very beginning, you can see how it touches on every single point of your external branding. So, um, it's, it's crucial that you develop that internal branding before your external. And then these are the ways that you can step-by-step step go through to develop an overall visual identity for your brand. So next we're gonna talk about your client experience once you've put these external branding elements together. <laughs> Yeah, so client experience is really what you want to think about. <clears throat> Once you have the first two exter internal and external branding all done and wrapped up and you're happy with that, now it's time to bring it in front of our customers' faces. <clears throat> so client or customer experience refers to how a business engages with its customers at every touch point of their journey when interacting with the brand. So that can be from marketing to sales to online presence and everywhere in between. So in large part, it's the sum total of all your interactions a customer has with your brand. So after developing your external branding, you're gonna to wanna to update your business's social media channels, Google My Business, website, print items, and any other customer facing areas, whether digital or in print. Um, to foster brand recognition and customer loyalty, it's important that your branding is consistent between all your platforms of the customer journey. Um, so to start, uh, for social media, we would recommend uh, branded social media templates to create consistency across your feed. Um, so you can work with a de design agency such as ourselves or create your own templates on Canva, um, create branded post templates, story templates, highlight images, and story stickers. All of this can make making your social media posts a lot faster because you already have your templates done and you just have to pop in different announcements or images into your art, into your consistent templates. Um, it can also be helpful to develop a social media branding guideline. This is something we typically offer to our clients when we're doing uh, social media templates for them. And this includes rules for your branding on social platforms, such as guidelines for copywriting and tone of voice, hashtag use and emoji use, as well as all of the visual rules to follow for consistency sake. Um, for websites, you'll wanna use the same style guidelines from your overall branding um, across your whole website. So you wanna make sure you're using the same fonts and colors and general spacing and layout um, from your external branding. And then finally is uh, Google My Business. 
Um, you'll want to claim your Google My Business profile if you haven't already. It's a great asset for getting, getting in front of your audience. Um, and you can also use your Google My Business profile to list your products and services, which is super helpful for your SEO um, across Google as well. So make sure to connect your website, your social media platforms, and any other important links to your profile. Um, make sure your branding on Google My Business is consistent with the rest of your online platforms. So you're going to want to, again, upload, upload your logo, photos of your products and services, photos of your staff, photos of your business location. Again, all of this, the more content you have there, the more you're going to show up on Google when people are searching for your products and services. Um, you can also use Google My Business to make announcement posts about sales, events, and other important information. Um, and that's also where you're going to respond to your customer reviews. So um, this is a big part of important, important part of finishing up your branding um, and making sure that it's across all the platforms. Um, this is obviously something that is a big job, but once you've done it, you have a really good customer journey that's recogni recognizable across the whole way. Wherever your customers are, they're going to know um, that that's your business. Mm -hmm. So just to wrap up from kind of beginning of the process to the end, we want to start with that internal branding. It's so, so, so important because it really does kind of flesh out your whole brand story before getting into the design aspect of it. So we do recommend spending some time, uh, you know, have a little workshop with yourself where you answer these questions. Uh, you decide what is valuable to your brand. What do you, um, what is your mission with your business? What do you want to provide your customers and how do you want them to view your business? Uh, and then once you have that laid out, those key points that you've discovered about your business, the personality of your business, um, your unique selling proposition, then take another day, have another visual workshop with yourself of, you know, what elements, including color, including type, including your logo, what, what can you sort of visually share how can you visually share those internal values that you've developed? Um, and time and time again, we always see that the businesses that take that time to develop their internal come out with uh, more successful external branding. Um, and then when you take those things and, and um, have it consistent within your client journey, within your social media, within your website, every touch point with your customer that just sends it home to them that they know what your business is, who, who you are as a business and what they can expect from you. And like we said earlier in the presentation, this will just enforce loyalty to your brand. It will help um, customers trust your brand uh, and feel like they have uh, a connection to your brand and they'll wanna share that with their friends and family. Um, so that's sort of how our process from the start to the finish goes when we work with clients on branding. Um, and we just find it's very important to take this time to, to develop these um, internal, external client experience all along the way. Um, so that is our kind of roadmap to success when it comes to <laughs> building your brand. Uh, if anyone does have any questions for us, um, we're happy to answer. And we hope you've taken uh, a couple good tips from today to start your journey, whether it's you know a rebrand, a refresh, or start from the very beginning. So I, there is a couple questions I see on the chat, but we'll hold off for two seconds because I don't have any on Facebook. Yes. Um, and so what I'll say is for those of you who are watching on Facebook, if you have any questions um, or would like to connect with Rachel and Theo, um, please do. Uh, you can see their uh, contact information is on the screen, or you can connect with us at the Business Center Guelph Wellington, and we'd be happy to make that introduction. Um, for those of you who are watching live, uh, 
in our Zoom room, please stick around for a few seconds. We will also be providing this recording up on our YouTube channel for people who want to watch it later. Um, if you've missed something or you found that you want to go back and re-listen to parts of it. Uh, so I will say thank you right now to Theo and Rachel. I'll ask everybody in the Zoom room to stick around for two seconds. And thank you for those of you who are watching live. And we'll see you again shortly.